It's a quiet night, not unlike many others in this sleepy little town. Until suddenly, something comes streaking across the sky and crashes into the forest. Representatives of various government agencies have been tracking the craft on its journey, and they're racing in to be the first to get their hands on the life form inside. But an intrepid kid happened to be riding her bike nearby, and if she can get through the force field first, she'll be able to save this creature from such a fate. This is Steven Spielberg's Eat. Uh, oh, sorry, no. Uh, this is Visitor in Blackwood Grove. The Visitor and the Kid will work together throughout this game. The Visitor comes up with a pass rule which will allow some objects to pass through the force field around the ship and keep others out. If the Kid is the first to figure out what the pass rule is, she and the Visitor win together. The agents are all on their own team. If any of them solves the pass rule first, that agent is the only winner. Or if the Visitor runs out of cards, all the agents win. Put the force field board in the middle of the table with the trust board nearby and shuffle the deck of object cards. Assemble the visitor's shield on the force field board such that it faces the visitor player. Or if your shield is a little deformed like ours is, try flipping it upside down and just sitting it in front of the visitor. Either way, give the visitor all four guest tokens. Then the kid takes her roll card and card markers puts the trust meeple on the first space of the trust board and draws seven cards into her hand. The agents each choose a roll card, take the matching card markers, and also draw seven cards. The visitor takes their roll card, flips two cards from the object deck, and places them face up near the force field, then draws 14 cards into their hand. Based on these 14 cards and the two on the table, the visitor decides what the pass rule will be for this game. Some good examples are things that contain metal, things that make noise, or things that are lighter than a textbook. Pass rules should never have anything to do with the name of the object, who played the cards, or how they were played, and they shouldn't favor any player over another. If you're having a tough time coming up with a good pass rule, you can use or modify one of the suggestions on the included example cards. Once they've settled on the pass rule, the visitor chooses seven cards to keep in their hand and returns the other seven to the bottom of the object deck. Then they classify the two cards that are face up on the table according to the pass rule. If the pass rule applies to the card, it is admitted into the force field and placed face up on the board. If the pass rule does not apply, the card is repelled and placed face up on the table around the outside of the board. The agent to the visitor's left takes the first turn. On an agent's turn, they have two options. They can either test an object or attempt to prove the pass rule. To test an object, pass one of the cards in your hand to the visitor. The visitor then looks at the card and classifies it face down. When a card is classified face down, the player who played it may pick it up to privately review it at any time. Make sure you know whose face-down classified cards are whose. For a repelled object, this is easy. The player who played the card keeps it face-down in front of them instead of putting it near the game board. For admitted objects, put it near the edge of the board, angled toward the player who played it, and mark it with a card marker. If the agent is confident that they already know what the pass rule is, they can instead attempt to prove it. The visitor doesn't understand human language, so you can't just speak your guess aloud. Instead, draw four cards from the deck and place them face up in a line directly across from the visitor's shield. The visitor then uses the guess tokens to secretly mark the classification of each of these four objects. For repelled objects, move the token away from the shield. For admitted objects, move it toward the shield instead. When they're finished, the player attempting to prove the pass rule then moves each of the four cards toward or away from the shield according to what they think the pass rule is. The visitor then lifts the shield to reveal the guest tokens. If everything lines up, the pass rule is successfully proven. If not, the visitor classifies all four objects face up and the turn ends. If an agent successfully proves the pass rule, they win the game. But if they attempt to prove the pass rule and fail, the kid gains two trust, advancing the trust meeple two spaces on the trust board. 
When the agent's turn is finished, they draw back up to a hand of seven cards and play continues clockwise with the next agent. Once all the agents have taken a turn, the kid gets a go. Her turn works a little differently. First, if she has no cards in her hand, she draws one from the deck. Then, depending on where her trust token is, she can choose to predict objects or attempt to prove the pass rule. The kid can predict objects no matter where her trust is. She chooses a card from her hand, reveals it to the whole group, and guesses whether it will be admitted or repelled. The visitor then classifies the card. If the kid guessed wrong, she gains nothing and her turn ends. If she was right, she may choose whether to stop or to guess another card, with a limit of three cards per turn. If she chooses to stop or guesses all three cards correctly, she gains one trust for each correct guess. But again, if she guesses wrong at any point during the turn, she gains nothing. If the kid's trust is four or higher, the first card she guesses is placed face down the way the agent's test cards are. Whenever the kid's trust advances, she immediately gains the corresponding reward for the space her trust token lands and any spaces it passes along the way. Note, this is the only way the kid can draw new cards unless her hand is empty at the start of her turn. If the kid's trust is two or higher, she can start choosing to prove the pass rule instead of predicting cards. This works pretty much the same as when an agent does it. If she's right, the kid and the visitor both win together. If she's wrong, her turn just ends. She obviously doesn't gain any trust. Once she reaches eight trust, she can start attempting to prove the pass rule on the same turn she's already done some predictions. After all the agents and the kid have gone, the visitor gets a turn of their own. If the kid's trust is two or lower, the visitor chooses one card from their hand and classifies it face up. If the kid's trust is three or higher, this card is revealed to the kid secretly and classified face down instead. Note that when it comes to face up classifications, there are only eight spaces on the board and eight spaces around the board. If all eight spaces are filled when a new card needs to be classified face up, the visitor must choose a card to cover up with the new one. Players can never look at any cards that have been covered, and if multiple cards are being classified in the same turn, none of those cards can be covered on that turn. The visitor never draws new cards, and if they don't have a card in their hand to classify when it's their turn, the game ends and the agents all win. And that's pretty much all you need to know to play Visitor in Blackwood Grove. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like that, be sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and most importantly, go on over to twitch.tv slash BNB Tabletop and give us a follow there. We play board games live every Sunday night at 7.30 p.m. Pacific time on a show we call The Board and Barrel. And it's a very interactive broadcast. We have house rules that you guys can influence throughout the course of the game. Virtual bingo. You can bet on who's going to win. It's a lot of fun. And I look forward to seeing you there.